Now, because of this YouTube channel, I don't just get a lot of local clients, I actually get a lot of out-of-state clients. And most of my out-of-state clients, when they're thinking about moving to Oklahoma, they want new construction. And I can tell you, there is a lot of new construction here in the Oklahoma City metro area. But people often have a lot of questions. One of those questions is, Russell, do I get to pick everything out? How long does it take to build a house? Is there anything that's move-in ready? In this video, I'm gonna try and answer most of your questions. But before we dive into it, I'm gonna need you to do one thing, and that's please like and subscribe. Now, when it comes to new construction, there's pretty much three types of houses. There's a spec house, there are semi-customs, and then there are what I would call full customs. And they're all a little different and they all have their pluses and their minuses. So what exactly is a spec house? A spec house is something that has already been built or it's something that is going to be close to being finished, okay? Spec houses are great for people who are picking up the phone and they're making this call right here. They're like, Russell, it's late spring and I'm in the Bay Area, I'm in Orange County, I'm in DC, I'm in New York, I'm in, in Arkansas. My kids are getting out of school late May, early June. My house is under contract and we're moving to Oklahoma, okay? I don't wanna be in an Airbnb for like three months. I don't wanna be in an apartment for six months. I wanna be able to move from where I'm at and into my new house with one swoop. Okay, and that's where spec houses come in. Okay, again, a spec house is usually already complete or they're pretty close to being finished, probably within the next, you know, 30 to 60 days. Okay, if you're someone that's paying cash, um, coming from California, New York, or someplace like that, or heck, Texas, you know, I got a lot of clients that are coming in from Texas and they're, and they're paying cash. If you're coming in from an area like that and a house has already been built, when it comes to a spec house, you can move into a house in Oklahoma in about two weeks if it's finished, if you're paying cash. If you're financing like most people are, you could be in a house within 30 days, okay? Again, I got clients that are flying in, looking at houses for one to two days, you know, putting offers, packing up, waiting for their kids to finish school, and then boom, you know, they're closing their house in California, they're gonna close on their house in, in on the East Coast, and then they're gonna get in the U-Haul, drive to Oklahoma, close on their house here and move right in, okay? So that's a spec house. Another good thing about a spec house is they usually have the best incentives, you know? So a builder may be offering something like, you know, 5.99 interest rate, okay? And then they might be also offering closing cost versus a house that you're building from the ground up. The builder may just be offering one of those incentives, all right? But with a spec house, something that's already been done or is close to being finished, a lot of times builders will give you the best incentives. Instead of you know $5,000 in incentives, maybe they give you $15,000. The one negative about a spec house is, again, it's finished, it's complete. There's not a lot of changes you're gonna be allowed to make to that house, okay? I did have some clients just recently, they were able to change the backsplash in the kitchen. Uh, I did have uh, some clients use part of their incentives to change the carpet in the bedrooms to uh, the tile floor that's in the living room in the kitchen. But other than that, there's not gonna be any major changes. Again, but again, if you're someone that's like, you know, I really, I'm ready to move in, I wanna be in a house in the next 45 days, then a spec house is gonna be great for you. And spec houses just don't come in, you know, 200,000 or 300,000. I mean, you can buy a spec house in Oklahoma that's 4,000 square feet and almost a million dollars. So every price point from starter home to luxury home, there's going to be a spec house that's going to fit your budget. And it, they're pretty much gonna be in every area. So if you're looking in Edmond, Yukon, Mustang, um, Norman, Moore, Piedmont, you're looking in the Deer Creek area, I'm telling you, you're gonna be able to find a spec house that's probably gonna fit your budget and you're gonna be able to move into it in no less than 45 days. Now, before we move on to the next section, 
how much do these new homes cost, okay? It really just depends on the builder and it's also gonna depend on the location. Right now in Edmond, you can buy a brand new house for $168 a square foot. Heck, you can buy a brand new house in Mustang for $140 a square foot. With that being said, you're gonna get what you pay for. Those homes are not gonna have a lot of bells and whistles. A good rule of thumb, in my opinion, is that if you're gonna buy a house in Edmond, you wanna be looking to pay somewhere between uh, $195 to uh, $205 a square foot. That's what you probably are looking to spend. In Mustang, Yukon, those homes are probably gonna be around 10 to 15% cheaper. So you can easily buy a brand new house in one of those places for about 170 to $185 a square foot. Now, if you're looking for a house with prime location, or you're looking for a house with a little bit of land in Edmond, then that price is probably gonna go from 205 a square foot to probably around $225 a square foot. Now, if you want luxury and land or luxury and prime location, then you're probably looking at about $250 a square foot and up in Edmond, okay? And again, Yukon, Mustang, Piedmont, that Canadian County area, you're probably looking to spend 10 to 15% cheaper, okay? So instead of $250 a square foot, you're probably looking at somewhere between 220 and 230 a square foot. Now, the next house on the list is gonna be what I would call a semi-custom. Uh, a semi-custom home is for the client that has more time. You know, when you get a semi-custom, you get to pick the lot, you get to pick the elevation, you get to pick the floor plan. Um, you know, you pretty much get to build the house from the ground up. But the reason why I use semi-custom is because once you make one decision with the house, it kind of triggers limitations on the next decision. You know, for example, if you're someone that's uh, dealing with the builder and the builder says they have over a hundred paint colors you can choose from, or a hundred flooring choices, or a hundred different countertops, or whatever the case may be. Once you pick that floor color, then it's gonna trigger limitations on the countertop color or the paint color. And the reason why I call it a semi-custom is because the builder is responsible for the loan on that house, okay? So if your deal falls through, then the builder has to sell that house to somebody else. So they are going to limit what you choose or what you pick, okay? And they usually work with designers to make sure, hey, if this buyer bails out on this house, is this house still gonna sell? So a lot of times the builders, again, they'll let you pick the lot, the elevation, you know, they'll let you pick everything that's in it within reason. You just can't go in there and say, I want my walls to be Home Depot orange. They're not gonna let you do that, okay? They're gonna say, if you pick this flooring color, you get to pick this, you know? So again, do you get to pick everything? Yes. However, again, it has limitations. Now, how long does it take for a house to be built in Oklahoma? I mean, it really depends. There are some builders like Tabor, they say that your house will be built in six to seven months, okay? Um, there are some builders, it might take them seven to nine months to build your house, okay? So if you're a person that has the time, you know, we're moving to Oklahoma, is you're not in a hurry, or you're being relocated here by a company, and they're gonna put you up in an Airbnb or a hotel for you know, six, seven months, and, and there are a lot of people out there that get that luxury, then building something from the ground up is a great choice. And the last type of house is what I would call a full custom. A full custom is you hire the engineers, you hire the architect, you hire the builder, um, and instead of the bank giving the loan to the builder, they give the loan to you. Now, don't get me wrong, the builder's still gonna be in charge of hiring subcontractors and making sure everything is done properly, okay? That's the builder's job. And however, you're in charge of the money, you know? And when you're in charge of the money, you get to do whatever the heck you wanna do. Like I said earlier, if you want your living room to be Home Depot orange, guess what? Your living room can be Home Depot orange. If you wanna put a bowling alley in your backyard, you can put a bowling alley in your backyard. When it comes to a full custom, you can do whatever you want to do. However, you got to remember everything costs money, okay? And the bank is only going to give you so much. So, if you overspend, that's money that you're going to have to get someplace else. 
When I was in construction sales, I talked to dozens of people that ended up being 60, 70, $80,000 over, which means a lot of people had to like tap into their retirement because the bank was like, I am only giving you 750,000. Right now you're at 850. You know, you're $100,000 over. We're not giving you the additional $100,000 to, to finish your project. They had to go get that money someplace else. So again, if you do a full custom, I mean, make sure that you are staying within budget. Also, hire the right builder, okay? Don't pick the builder that's going to give you the cheapest bid because there is a reason why their bid is the cheapest, especially when you're building a luxury home. There are builders out there that will say, hey, you can get granite countertops for $35 a square foot. You're not gonna want granite countertops that cost $35 a square foot. You're gonna want countertops that cost like $90 a square foot. You're building a million dollar house. Find a builder that is going to say, these are the countertops that I use. Okay, these are the fixtures that I use. This is the moisture barrier I use on a luxury house. This is the facade, this is the brick. You wanna use a builder who is used to building luxury homes, okay? Or a builder that is used to building homes where they do not use the cheapest stuff possible. I was in construction sales, like I said, I've seen it, I've talked to people. So again, be careful when you're building a full custom. So another thing about buying a spec or buying a semi-custom, you know, it kind of helps you not go overboard. And how long does it take to build a full custom house? From the architect to the engineer to laying the foundation, I would say anywhere from nine months to a year to build a full custom house, maybe even 15 months. Now, if you are interested in a spec house or a um, semi-custom house, what are the next steps? Okay, so in, in both cases, with both of those houses, um, once you figure out the spec house you want, your next step is going to be to secure financing, which is something that you probably should be looking into before you even you know, start looking at houses. You really wanna know, is it better for me to use the builder's financing or is it gonna be better off using my own financing? A lot of times when it comes to semi-customs and spec houses, most of the incentives that I talked about earlier, um, you know, paying closing costs or you know, paying down points or whatever a builder is offering you, you're only gonna get those by using the builder's financing. However, you still might wanna to talk to an outside lender, okay? Just don't take the builder's financing and say, that's it. Because sometimes an outside lender, especially for people who have really good credit scores, you know, that are floating around the 800s, a lot of lenders are matching and they might even give you a better rate, okay? So if a builder's offering you, you know, 5.9 FHA and you have a credit score of 800, there might be a lender in the Metro that's willing to give you, you know, 5.75 and make it a conventional. So even though it's probably more beneficial to go with the builder's lender, you always wanna double check. You, also, you always wanna make sure you're making the right choice. Now, once your financing is secure, the next step is paying your earnest money. If you're getting a spec house, earnest money is gonna be basically somewhere between two to 5,000 for a spec house from a popular builder in the Oklahoma City metro area. And there are tons of great builders here. But you're usually gonna pay around you know, two to $5,000, depending on how much the house costs for your earnest money. And of course, earnest money is just basically a deposit saying, yes, I wanna buy this house. Um, if you're going to buy a semi-custom house, your earnest money could be a little bit higher. So if you're you know, building a house and you wanna have a more premium lot, that's maybe, instead of it being you know, a quarter acre in some additions or whatever the case may be. Let's say you want it to be a full acre. Well, that lot might cost $15,000 more than a standard lot. So you're gonna to have to pay the difference. And of course, that earnest money goes towards the purchase of your house, okay? It goes towards your down payment. It's not just money that you are giving to the builder. 
Now, if you're buying a semi-custom house, the next step for you is gonna be selections. You're gonna be selecting floor plan, elevations, you're gonna be you know, picking out what countertops, what flooring, what paint. Those are gonna be all your steps, okay? And you're gonna be included all the way through the process. In fact, because I work with a lot of out-of-state clients, you know, I try and follow the build process. So every few weeks, I show up on the site, you know, make sure that something's getting painted. I, I try to make sure everything's staying on track. Okay, we don't want surprises. If the build's going slower than 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 usual, you're gonna know because I'm gonna tell you. Because the builder nine times out of ten is gonna be like, oh, everything's great, everything's good, and then about three weeks out or a month out, they're gonna be like, actually, we're a little behind. So you know. And that's a good thing about dealing with a realtor, whether it's a spec house or a semi-custom. You want eyes and ears on the project, okay? Now, once everything's complete, everything's been built, the next step for me is inspections, okay? Now, when you buy a new house, you don't have to do inspections. I'm a big fan of it. When I bought my first house, it was brand new and I didn't get an inspection because I wanted to save the money. And I lived in that house for two months and I didn't realize that I had no insulation in my attic, okay? And I moved into my house in May. So I spent June and July in a house with no insulation in the attic, okay? My house was hot, it's, it was hot, like unbearably hot. And I kept popping the fuse on my AC because it was so hot. Luckily for me, every house in Oklahoma comes with a one-year warranty. Um, the builder reimbursed me for my $400 electricity bill because that's how much it was costing me to try and keep my house cool, which it wasn't working, okay? So they ended up paying the electricity bill, but I, I just still wish I would have had an inspection, you know? In fact, when I moved out of my house and I was getting stuff out of my, out of my house, I saw a case, a 12-pack of beer, in my attic, you know what I mean? So the people who framed my house were drinking, you know? So again, I just, I, I wish I'd had inspection. Now, once we turn our list of repairs to the builder, which are usually pretty minor, um, we'll have a walkthrough with the builder, making sure that everything's been fixed. Normally that happens um, a couple of days before closing. Depending on the builder, sometimes you'll meet with them twice. Some of them will have what's called a builder's orientation where they actually walk the house with you and they give you all the features and say, hey, this is what this does, this is what's going on, this is how you take care of this, um, which is extremely helpful. Um, and then they come out a second time and again is the final walkthrough. And the final walkthrough is again, if things need to be fixed, they are going to basically wanna make sure that they have been fixed to your satisfaction, okay? Once that's been done, then the last step is it's gonna be closing. Closing is gonna be pretty easy. If you're paying in cash, closing on a house takes about 15 minutes. If you're financing uh, and you haven't been through it before, closing usually takes around 35 to 45 minutes. As far as your down payment and your closing cost, you know, you're going to uh, bring that money in a cashier's check or you can wire the funds from your bank account, which I'm a fan of because you don't have to walk around with a giant check in your pocket. So if you're looking to buy a house in the Oklahoma City metro area, again, log onto my channel, look at all the model home tours. If you just wanna call me and say, hey Russell, I'm thinking about moving to Oklahoma City, I wanna buy an existing house, call me. If you wanna buy a brand new house, call me. If you're like, hey, I'm thinking about renting for a year and then buying a house, call me, okay? Um, I, I don't make any money off rentals, but if you just need information, don't hesitate to call. You know, um, if you want to ask me about should I rent or should I own, call me and I'll, and I'll kind of walk you through the whole process. Because normally nine times out of 10 in Oklahoma, you should probably buy versus rent. But that's, we can get into it. Whatever you need, call, text. If not, I'll see you on the next video.